and welcome to Rugby That Rocks, your one-stop show for all things of Varsity Cup and Varsity Shield related. Now in the Varsity Cup, of course, this week we saw the defending champions go down 18-0 at home. What a loss for UP Tux. But also a lot happening in Varsity Shield. Speak more about it. Alma Smith joining me. Yes, and speaking of defending champions, CUT smash TUT with five tries before half time. Take a look. Having suffered their first defeat of the Varsity Shield season, the Central University of Technology bounced back with an away win at the University of the Western Cape. Next on their path was a match against the Twining University of Technology, whose last outing resulted in a 32-8 defeat to UKZN. 2,000 fans arrived on a glorious summer evening in Bloemfontein, and they were rewarded for their presence as the teams shared eight tries between them. Moekua Bolofo, who received the Player That Rocks award, scored the first five-pointer inside four minutes. CUT were flexing their muscles and well on their way as Alec Mflanga joined his teammate with a celebration or two. The hosts were looking dangerous and were looking to run at every opportunity. <laughs> TUT's disappointing evening was about to get even worse as Daniel von Amalva was the next to cross. <laughs> and the bonus point was wrapped up inside 20 minutes courtesy of Charles Hitchcock, who had become a regular visitor to the opposition Ingol area. <laughs> Loose forwards don't often score the bulk of the tries, but Bonofo was trying his best to challenge the backs as he went over for his second 34-0 at the break. CUT enjoying oranges and a casual chat, while TUT's halftime talk was not a pleasant one. Hill discipline also plagued both teams in the second half as Evald Maria saw yellow in the CUT camp, while Mosueyo Maruping was the guilty party in the TUT team. The visitors' only points came from a Gabriel Smith try that was converted by Mornaihu before Isaac Gitlevs became the third player and second from TUT to sit in the naughty corner. CUT's first points of the half only arrived in the 72nd minute as Gideon Gauss went over. While well, the host sealed the deal with a try from Francis Sita, mission accomplished for the Central University of Technology. They punished us all the way. We got caught on the on the back foot, and they are they're a very good side. If you are, if you don't uh, put up your defense, they're going to show you how how bad your defense are, and that's why the scores there. Um, I can't say what's wrong with the boys. Um, I think it's just it's the, it's, it's the mental switch that we must put on. That's a great victory for CUT. Now in the other game, it was John Mitchell up against Peter de Villiers' side and it was UWC that bagged a victory. The University of KwaZulu-Natal were back on home soil after they had earned a draw at the University of Fort Hare on Thursday. The MP were looking good and were starting to tick the boxes that John Mitchell was hoping for as the season moved into its business period. The pressure was certainly on the University of the Western Cape, who had lost their last four that included a 33-24 defeat to the MP on the 17th of February. Dion Carney scored the first try of the match for UKZN in the sixth minute, while Duncan Campbell added the extras. 19 minutes in and UWC had found their reply. A Tariq Allen try and a successful conversion from Freddie Miller putting the teams on level terms after the first quarter. It signalled the start of what turned into a nail-biting affair. Campbell restored the host lead with a try that he turned into an eight-pointer. When Brandon Bailing went over, UKZN were certainly seen as the favourites but someone forgot to give UWC a copy of the script. <laughs> Dean Herbert went over for the visitors who showed that they can certainly dish up some mouth-watering tries of their own.
The pendulum was tilting towards UWC at the break as Yondela Stampu gave his team the momentum as they regrouped with their coaching staff, but UKZN was still in control of the match. Those turned with the lead, but that evaporated as Miller nailed two penalties in the first 30 minutes while UKZN were still stuck on the half-time score. Then came the moment that UWC were desperately waiting for, as Stampu scored his second. UKZN had the final say, but it was too little too late, as UWC held on for the win. 33-32, the final score at Howard College Rugby Stadium in Durban. I think we had a good start to the game. I think we went up 24-8. So um, I think that was a, a turning point. If we had uh, uh, turned the knife a little bit there and uh, put a few more points on the board, uh, I think the game would have been over. But fair, fair credit to UWC. Uh, they fought the whole game and they had great spirits even when they were down 24-8. So um, yeah, they thoroughly deserved the win yet tonight. They were the better team. In terms of the past four or five years at Varsity Cup, um, launched the Varsity Cup competition and Varsity Shield, I think every year there's a major improvement in the type of style of rugby. Uh, the rugby is a major improvement. A lot of guys get the opportunity to, to, to play in the high league like Vodacom Cup and Stormers. I mean, in terms of UWC, uh, we got two players currently in the Stormers squad and, and, and it, it creates a lot of opportunities for guys playing on this level and not just on Varsity Shield but Varsity Cup as well and it opens a lot of doors and people, you get seen a lot. So the opportunities are endless and in terms of rugby it's a, it's a good thing. On the Varsity Shield log, defending champions CUT more than 10 points clear of the rest and none of the other teams have won more than two games. TUT right at the bottom with 10 points. TUT next phase UWC at home while the University of Forte will play host to top of the table CUT and Alice. After watching those televised games on a Monday evening, I'm sure sometimes you're left wondering what happened in the other matches. You can get the scores online, but if you want the highlights from all of those matches and the Varsity Shield games, go download the Supersport app, and if you need any help with it, here's a little tutorial. Once your mobile device has the Supersport app installed, you will have access to a multitude of sport codes a DSTV decoder owner typically gets to enjoy. To get to the Varsity Cup page, Select the home icon where you will scroll down to the Rugby tab on which the Varsity Cup option is found. Once this is opened, a highly interactive world awaits, which includes, but is not limited to, the latest news about your favourite team and competitions such as Superbrew, where viewers can predict the scores of upcoming Varsity Cup matches. The latest results, upcoming fixtures and log standings detailed with aspects such as points differential, tries scored and conceded, and bonus points scored and most importantly live match streaming and highlights of action from the highly entertaining varsity rugby and shield matches enjoy all of this and more by downloading the supersport app and never miss out on all the action on your world of champions mobile data charges are in accordance with your service provider don't go anywhere after the break. We catch up with the VIT players as they do a bit of community service at Usindis or Ministries. We also catch up with UJ Rez Majuba who are taking part in the Gosses Licha. Welcome back to Rugby That Rocks. Round 5 saw the conditions wreak havoc in Cape Town at the Super Windy. And up in the north, the teams had to contend with very wet conditions. Wits unfortunately battled despite playing at home and lost their 12th game on the trot. In the front. In control is Trute. This is looking good for the Matibas. Sure. Got it, bro. Got it. Gotta be a try. Gotta be a try. Looks like Christopher Clute going there, Owen. I saw it short, but you yes. say you saw the ground. I definitely saw grounding. That's perfect. Yeah. Try. Try being awarded for the Madibas. It looks like it's Chris Clute. Oh, got free on the loose end to provide that left shoulder for Akko. That's a useful strap. Base. There's a cut. It's a good work they've done by Brandt. Brandt inside. This is going to be. Yes, yes it is. And a good try under the sticks. Yam Gelangam. Second try for the Madibas. Thirteen points to four. Ball retention has been good. 
Kohler, five meters out, Mitz University. Now, numbers, space, all is good, and finally he's got it down. Brings Crossley. Keeping it close. Vets still committed in defense. Hoot has gone the show and goal. And that seals it for Madibas. As we confirm, full time score at Vets University. It was the Madibas victorious by 18 points to 12. Well, things may not be going well on the field for Verts, but as far as community service goes, well, they're right on top of our list. They went out to help at Usindiso Ministries, which aids women and children who have been abused. Located in the heart of Johannesburg is Usindiso Ministries. It's a shelter that provides for abused women and their children. It's also the preferred charity for Verts University in 2014. We have um, different floors, so there is abuse, there is um, homeless, and there is a floor for the teenagers. What's the biggest need at the shelter? Oh, uh, we have mothers uh, with children, and um, because financially they're not well off, um, we, we provide nappies, and sometimes it's newborn babies. They need um, food, baby food and clothing and, you know, toiletries. Andrew, it's, it's uh, great to see coaches directly involved in this sort of project. Just uh, your own involvement, why did you decide to join the boys? Well, you know, in Joburg, time, time is rushed and uh, it's nice to take a time away from work and come and have a look what... Uh, people with less fortunate circumstances have to put up with and it's good to, to lend a hand as well. Sometimes if you can roll up the sleeves, I know I'd, I'd love to do it a little bit more with the guys and the guys are going to get me stuck inside the, the work just now, but it is good. I think it's good for us and uh, I'd like to challenge the other coaches to also roll up their sleeves and uh, get involved as well. Why this specific charity where we are today? This charity was chosen, in, I think it was a year ago, we came here last year as well. And um, look, it's in our local community and it's a, it's a shelter for the, the abused woman. So it's part of the cause which Vastic Cup has been supporting, so we just felt it was appropriate. So what did you guys do today? Uh, we're cleaning the toilets, uh, just scraping the bathrooms and stuff. Uh, that's basically it, and we did the doors as well. Yeah, that's basically what we did. What sort of reality check is it for you guys to be here today and coming out of easier circumstances and making a difference in the lives of those who really need it? Um, for us it's a big deal because it's, it's my second time doing charity work and it really to me it means a lot helping people just bring it, uh, bring it back to the community and helping them out so it really means a lot to me. Lastly just a plea to the community especially in Johannesburg anything you have to say for them? I say um, this is a place for women and children that has been abused, né? and you, you, you got the right to, to speak up, up against it. And, and also, if you don't speak up, nobody will know. So women are strong, and as a woman speaking, I, I've been raped, and I've been raped three times, and I've been abused, but that, that didn't make me to lie down. I, I needed to, to become something and yet Usindi so they taught me how to love and how to forgive and I'm so grateful to be here and I tell you one thing if you talk, if you speak it out, you are opening doors for you and for others. Be a man. Help where help is needed. These are vetsmen and we're doing our bit. This is Varsity Red Rocks. And if you want to support the 13 Varsities in their great efforts to help uh, keep the aggro on the field, then go to varsitycap.co.za for details on how you could bid on one of those limited edition pink Varsity Cap rugby balls. They are on auction until the halftime of the second game every Monday night, and the lucky bidder's names are announced on air in the stra second strat break of that second match.
And now on to the rugby at the Downey Craven Stadium on Monday afternoon. Shimlers and Marty's had a tough time of it in the wind, both scoring all their points in one half of the game. Shimlers before half time and Marty's in the second half. 2014 has been a disappointing one for Marty's. Two wins from four kept the pressure on the maroon jerseys, who were still fighting for a place in the top four. Shimla set the ground running and were looking to build on their impressive display against UJ last week. Justin Pappen crossed inside 20 minutes of the first whistle. It was the start Shimla's were after. Setu Tom added his name to the score sheet that secured a 13-0 lead at the break. Martis were forced to regroup and whatever the coaching staff had to say certainly hit the spot as the hosts clawed their way back in the second half. That man, Robert de Pria, bringing joy to the supporters in Stellenbosch. <laughs> Tini Berger's yellow card reduced Schimlas to 14 players. It was just what Martis needed as they scored one minute later through Friedrich Knell. The conversion was wide that kept the teams on level terms. Shimlas had an opportunity to steal the points, but Gauss Prince Lua missed the kick. 13 all the final score. Martis still struggling to break into the top four, while Shimlas are currently holding on to the last of the semi-final places. We're playing towards uh, a spot for a semi, uh, so we're playing for momentum. Um, I think we, we, uh, we didn't have the best of starts uh, with the first two losses of the, of the competition, but I think we, we're busy getting slowly, but surely we're getting momentum. Martis tough opponent, they're always in the run for the final, and um, I think uh, the draw was, uh, at the end of the day, the, the result that sums up the match the most because it was a hard-fought match, clean game, but well played. Well, there won't be much movement for both of those teams as far as the Varsity Cup log is concerned, that being Martis and Shimless. But from crazy wind to pouring rain, it was not a good day at the office for the defending champions, UP Tax, as they lost 18-0 at home to Booker. The big surprise on Monday night was reserved for a wet and cold LC de Villiers Stadium where the defending champions suffered their first defeat of the season while they also failed to score a point. The Northwest University Pickers scored two tries on the day, the first of which belonged to Akker van der Merwe, who gave the visitors a 10-0 lead at the interval. Donny Jordan scored his try early in the second period, while Adrian Engelbrecht was responsible for the rest of the points. Victory for Picker, who moved to the top of the standings, while Tix slipped into second position. It was very tough uh, out there, uh, the wet conditions, uh, but I think we adapted well to it. Um, we got a few lucky bounces and those stuff, but I'm just going for the, for the win. I think in a game like this, you get um, a few chances and you have to use them. That's what Picker did, and we just didn't use our chances. And if you're in need of a roundup of what took place at UJ, stay right where you are. That's after this. But first up, we're stopping by one of their reses, Majuba. There's one by the same name in Stellenbosch, but this one's in the heart of Joburg. Welcome to the Majuba training grounds. As you can see, Majuba hard at work training for their next game in a week's time. Hey, Lester, come on, man. Do this properly. Drop down and give me five now. As you can see, we have to keep them on a tight leash, otherwise they lose focus. Welcome to Majuba. My name is Lunga Kupiso, the physical trainer for the Majuba rugby team. We are situated in the Pantin Road campus of the University of Johannesburg. With me today, I've got Linda, the captain of the Majuba rugby team. So, just quickly tell us about your 2013 first before we even move to this year's competition. 2013 was quite a hard year for the Chains. Um, we had a lot of new faces in the team, so I had to start again, starting all over the team. And then, uh, with the 2013 challenge, we only lost one game. And uh, the boys pulled through, we won the Vosti, Vosti League here at UJ and um, our goal was to be in the stand of competition and we made it. So your goal has been succeeded, you're now in the big guns, you're playing with the big guns, are you guys ready? Yeah, obviously it's a different challenge, uh, it's a new level, we've got uh, new players actually, we've got new first years, but uh, I'm sure the boys are going to step up this year, we have to win it and um, since we've been here, the boys have played a very good game. 
with me I've got Linda he's the current HK the prim of Majuba 2014 so as a prospective student I'm sitting at home and I'm watching the show why should I come and stay at Majuba well Majuba is a very special and appropriate residence so if you as a student want to stay at Majuba it's a good thing because Majuba is a good sports residence and it's a good academic race and in terms of if you're a sportsman it's a good place for you to be because in terms of sports we're taking it to greater heights and the climbing continues. Linda, just quickly tell us what does you guys playing in the Varsity Kosei's League, the stain of league, mean for Majuba as a rest? It's a dream come true because it was a five year plan which actually worked within that five years that Majuba will win the course haze internal league within the university and go play national course haze. It's like we, we're taking Majuba to greater heights and the climbing continues as our motto say. So it's a great achievement. Just quickly tell us, what are you guys as a race expecting from this? Well, we as a race, we're expecting to win this and take Majuba to greater heights, not only in Gauteng, but nationally. Oh, that's a turnover. Lister, come on, man, take us seriously. Just go to the coaching staff. You've got two new guys and you've got Steph as well. Who are the two new coaches? Um, two new coaches, are, our head coach is uh, Mac. Mac Masinga used to play Lions and uh, SA7. And we've got uh, Coach Jacob, he's a forwards coach. And then we've got Steph. Steph is our professional um, warm up coach. So, Linda, just going back to your coach, Mac, how have you guys ad um, adapted to his new systems if they are new systems? Um, Mac is a good coach. Um, Mac has been through the ranks. Uh, he's, played, he's played for Sevens, he's played for, for Lions. He's coached at the highest level here at UJ and he's seen how we play. So not a lot has changed from last year to this year. He already knows how, how we've been playing and the new structures. So um, we've been adapting to his game plan very well and uh, actually still the same thing. We're running the ball from everywhere. The boys are excited. So uh, yeah. So you've hit the ground running. Yeah. All right. I'm Lunga Kupiso for Supersport, for Rugby That Rocks. So Majuba contenders in the Stein of Corsais Liga competition play in the Hi-Fi Corp pool and they're at this stage third on points difference, level on five with Cobras and Heimat from Shimla's. Humanities Vits are right at the bottom. In the Incredible Connection pool, Pukka's Patria is right at the top with four points clear of Miedis from Marty's. Tux Onderstepoort and Opidani from NNMU at the bottom. Let's get back to Varsity Cup action where it seems the UCT IQ Tigers play so much better away from home. They back their third victory this season, beating UJ 29-37. It's a good scrum from UCT. They'll bring it back, they'll bring it flat. The drift across by Hugh Jones. It's a good recycle, they come same side. Great hands, beautiful start. Well, no problem with the try. That's the early five-pointer. Mr. Rashvinga, the referee, having to administer between those two. Front right forwards, the scrum comes. Jobber holds it in the back. Controls it nicely. He's about a metre away. He scores. Alexander, Grant. Holton. It's a quick ball. Alexander, Grant. That's Jones Davies, Jones Davies, Jones Davies scores! Gee, it's 12 and a half minutes, we've got three tries already. It's cool. Give me space, it right it's now. available. Crucial that UJ score from this foray. Out wide, Hasner, Walters, stepping, looking, stepping, running, diving, oh. try! Now lots of hunger shown from UCT. They don't want their trial on broached. But UJ will persist. They've got the drive going. They're over the trial line. It's got to be a try. That is fantastic work, UJ. Stay bound, seven. Much straighter. Advantage. Evan sliding up. Yeah. The advantage being played. Alexander holds the ball at the back. He's got a pick and do it. He does. Number 10. Yes. Alexander, he's going to look for Golly, and he's got absolutely no problem. He'll canter through. It opened up like the Grand Canyon. <laughs> now go back. Blindside, big fun sale, Butter. So close. Pretorius. 
for the vault. Over. And the fireworks go off in the background. Let's consider it something worse, okay? Van der Valt will get wide. Forster on the outside. Fantastic work. P.J. Walters gets on the outside. Resolute defense from this UCT team means that they will prevail. They will be the winners. 37 points to 29. Hooker hitting the Varsity Cup log with 19 points. Tux three points down with 16. Tux, UCT and NNMU all on three wins. But Schimler is scoring the number four spot thanks to bonus points. Witz with only two points to their name right at the bottom. It doesn't get any easier for the bottom place team of Witz. They're up against the top of the table NW Bicca in early action next week Monday. Then it's the IK Tigers up against Schimler's, while in the second televised match, it is UJ up against Marty's. In round five, the FNB fans player that rocks in the UJ versus IK games. It was Hugh Jones from IK's and Witz versus Madiba's saw Madiba's Enrico Acker walking away with the spoils. If you've got some great photos that you took at the games on Monday night, go share them with us on the Varsity Cup Facebook page. And if you want to tweet us during these matches or anything Varsity Cup related, use the hashtag SSRugby. Also log on to www.varsitycup.co.za. Don't forget to bid on those pink balls used during the strategy breaks. And the highest bidder will, of course, be announced in the second strat break of the second televised match. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again next week for more Rugby That Rocks.